Yo, what's up, YouTube? Alex with R Fitness. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the two apps that I recommend for weightlifting and planning your meals. App number one is the Strong Pro app. So what the Strong Pro app does is it, it's a digital workout tracker, meaning on your phone. It costs $4.99 per month. Really great investment, by the way. I totally recommend it. Previously, for years, you know, well, I started off using basically a steno notebook, you know, one of those flip over little notebooks, and I would jot down each workout in a pencil and eraser, and then I'd make adjustments as needed. Obviously, this was pretty time consuming because I'd have to sit there and record everything per workout. Then, as I got older and I started taking lifting seriously, uh, for somehow, for for some reason, I was able to remember what weight and exercise I was doing from week to week to week. Uh, and that's how I tracked it at that time. I Don't ask me how I could have remembered all that shit, but I did. That was years ago. Uh, since my mid-20s, however, I had been planning, tracking, and creating a workout via Excel spreadsheet. So I've always carried around a uh, clipboard with, again, a pencil and an eraser and I would put the Excel sheet in landscape mode. The horizontal columns would be all my separate exercises. The vertical columns would be the weights that I would do for that specific exercise during that week. Uh, my old workout routines would last anywhere from 6 to 12 weeks. Now they're just 12 weeks to keep it simple, stupid. Uh, according to what you're going to read, they usually tell you to switch up your routine every, every 6 to 8 weeks. I don't recommend doing this. I mean, I did this, you know, when I was younger. Now, just to be more practical, it's every 12 weeks. But realistically speaking, I mean, you should go ahead and change your workout as soon as you stop, as soon as you stop getting results. So right when you plateau is when you want to switch to a di different exercise and or a different workout routine altogether. Um, or unless you're maybe trained for, for a specific goal. So let's say you want to go from a hypertrophy uh, type of workout split, you know, in the 8 to 12 rep range down to, and then you want to switch for whatever reason, a powerlifting a workout split, you know, anywhere from like 3 to 5. I think powerlifting is like 3 to 5 reps. I wouldn't know. I've never actually competed in powerlifting, uh, nor have I ever uh, strategically just gone after a powerlifting type of workout. The lowest rep range that I've trained in is 4 to 6 reps. Uh, following a max, the max OT, max OT stands for maximum overtraining. And that's a workout routine, a preset routine I followed back when I was uh, in my mid twenties. I don't do it anymore. I mean, really, four to six reps. I'll, I'll. Uh, that's how I train my my lower body. But for upper body, just prevent injury. I don't go below like I want to say maybe six to eight. But anyways, back to Strong Pro App. So Strong Pro App is excellent for people like me that enjoy designing custom routines. So what it allows you to do is draw from a database of hundreds of exercises. I want to say like maybe like two to three hundred. Each separate exercise has a, a drawing and illustration of what the exercise is, a video. Sometimes it'll, it'll include a video as well as instructions. Um, you draw from this database to create a worked out template. They do have some preset templates in there, but not many. That's certainly not enough to rely on. Uh, but if you want to create your own custom templates, you know, all you have to do is is crack that database open. It's all indexed by by the first letter, you know, and the exercise name, and you can go ahead and put it in. And also, if you want to do a search by body part and or equipment used, you can go ahead and search the index like that. But anyways, for example, like me, like right now, I'm lifting weights four times per week. Um, once on Tuesday, once on Wednesday, I take Thursday off, and again on Friday and Saturday, and then I take Sunday and Monday off. Um, so for Tuesdays, I target, not, right now I'm doing like opposing muscle groups, so I'm doing chest and back. Uh, Wednesdays, I'm doing arms, which is biceps, triceps. Friday, I'm doing legs, which is hamstrings, quads, calves, and also lower back, and then Saturday, I'm doing shoulders and traps. Now, on Thursdays and Sundays, actually, I don't take the day off. I, I do take it off from, like, actual weightlifting, weightlifting. But I train abs, and then if I have uh, heavy bag training during during that workout split, which I do right now, I'll train, I'll do some bag training, some heavy bag work, and also full body stretch. 
Um, but back to the actual workout routine that I'm doing right now. So each template is broken down by three exercises per body part for that workout, uh, three sets of uh, three exercises. So for example, chest is three sets of incline dumbbell uh, press, followed by a underhand barbell row for my back. And then again, I, I switch over to chest. I do a, um, <clears throat> a standing a standing landmine barbell uh, chest press, you know, where I'm holding the end of the barbell, push it up and down like this. It's kind of hard to describe because it's not a very common exercise. Um, then I go back to back. I do a dumbbell row and then again chest. I do what's called sissy push-up, kind of a weird name, but basically it's when you're doing a push-up and you're, instead of being on your toes, you're on your knees, but, you know, you're pushing up and down with your hands. It allows you to get a greater pump because you do more reps. And then my last exercise is actually a wide grip uh, pull-up. <clears throat> wide grip pull-ups are great, great way to target your lats. Um, but anyways, moving forward, a lot of times I like to create my own exercises. So not everybody needs this kind of custom, custom ability. I do. I need this uh, level of customization because... Um, at least I want to say a third of my exercises that I do on a, on a normal basis are not in the uh, pre-existing database for strong, for the strong pro rep and the one even even the one you pay money for. I mean I'm pretty sure it's the same database whether free or the one you pay money for, but whatever. So I go ahead and put in my specific exercises. I name the exercise. Um, I put in the muscles targeted, and then I also put in the equipment used. Equipment used being barbell, dumbbell, machine. <clears throat> and or body weight or bands or whatever, whatever it may be. But the other cool thing is if I'm trying something new or if I'm trying an exercise I haven't done in a while and I'm setting up a routine, I know if I like an exercise based upon how many times I've performed it in the past. So for something I do a lot, like for example, a flat bench, uh, a dumbbell, dumbbell press, that's an exercise I know that works with my body anatomy, one that I like doing, one that I actually feel a pump or you know, I feel like I'm doing something. And that's as opposed to, you know, when I'm looking in the, the index of exercise, it'll tell me, like, maybe I've done it 30 times in the past. So a year from now, when I'm designing a chest back routine or just a chest uh, complementary muscle group, chest and triceps, for example, I know that I like doing the flat bench uh, dumbbell press, even if I hadn't done it for a long-ass time. And that's as opposed to, Another exercise, like for example, I don't do dumbbell flies, I don't do cable flies for whatever reason, because of the way my body's structured, maybe it's because I don't have big pecs, uh, it's just not a good exercise for me. So when I'm looking at the exercise index, when I'm pulling it up by muscle group, like let's say I put in chest, it'll give me all the exercises in the database for chest, and... Uh, d dumbbell flies is something that maybe I've done two, three, four, five times in the past, and I'll know not to include again in any following routines uh, just simply because I don't like doing that exercise. So moving forward, uh, the Strong Pro Rep also records your heaviest lifts. Like, and by this, I mean within that rep range. So like, let's say I've done a flat bench um, and I'm doing six to eight reps. Maybe my heaviest lift for that will be about 75 pounds uh Per, per arm. <clears throat> this is very helpful when I'm designing a routine. Um, it'll, it'll tell me, you know, what to shoot for, what my goal is. Now, it also includes a one rep maximum based upon your lift for a particular rep range. I don't ever one rep max because I work out alone right now with free weights anyway, so it's not something that, uh, that I need, but it's there for me if I do want to draw upon that information uh, at any point in time. So, Strong Pro App also allows you to A, time your overall workout. So when you're done with the workout and you're done putting in your specific weights for that set and that exercise and you're all the way complete, you just go ahead and hit finish at the end of your workout. And it'll be like this weird little like surprise, like like sound clip or something plays. And there's like these little, these little like clip art fireworks that go off. But you look at um, the total time it took you to do that workout. Typically, I strive to complete all my workouts within 45 minutes, but because I'm only doing like 18 sets tops. However, um, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit less. And typically, I'll do it more between like 45 minutes to an hour. 
Problem is, after about an hour, and that's when you're doing over like 18 sets, actually more like 20 sets, your testosterone levels start to drop off, and that's if you're a natty. If you train synthetically, like with uh, anabolic steroids, prohormones, SARMs, whatever, TRT, you can go ahead and push that envelope even forward. So somebody that's training with steroids, you know, they can, they can do a two, three hour long workout, depending on what kind of year they're on. It doesn't apply to me. Your natural T levels drop after an hour, so that's the maximum time I will do. Now, <clears throat> between each set, you can also set the how, how much you uh, rest between each set. So by default, I want to rest a minute and 30 seconds between each set. And that's, that's just the default that I always strive to do. If I'm doing higher reps, if I want to do, uh, keep my heart rate up, do more, more of an aerobic to kind of work out uh, with my weightlifting and I'm doing a higher rep range, maybe I'll only take 30 seconds rest between each set. If I'm doing more powerlifting type of workout, which, you know, as I just said, I, I rarely do, um, I will wait, you know, as, as much as two to three minutes between each set. Or let's say this was a set that I really pushed my ass off on, you know, I'll wait that extra three minutes, sometimes, occasionally, even five minutes like when I'm doing heavy squats. Uh, and the one place where I would go to if you don't know where to get ideas for new exercises, bodybuild.com provides a really cool uh, exercise database organized by body part. Now, here's the problem. More recently, bodybuild.com has transferred over to a membership fee type of pricing plan where you cannot access the actual videos of each exercise through bodybuilding.com anymore. You actually have to pay money for that. Don't ask me why they migrated over to that type of thing, because for years and years, bodybuilding.com was a free resource, and now it's no longer free. But they still do list the exercise. It'll show pictures, and it'll give you instructions. So it'll give you some good ideas for a new exercise. So I'm going to go ahead and link it down at the bottom of this video. Moving to the second and only other app you need. Uh, this one is for tracking your meals. So it's called Chronometer. Chronometer is actually pretty popular amongst people in the fitness industry. You know, people who take their eat their diet, even if they're recreational lifters or, or fitness athletes, they take it seriously. If you count your calories and you want to, and you're serious about losing weight, especially if you're older. Right now I'm in my late 30s, but for people that are 40 plus, you need to eat a very strict diet in order to recomp, lose body fat percentage. Chronometer is $8.99 per month. So the alternative is MyFitnessPal. I was screwing around with MyFitnessPal a little bit. Right now it's $19.99 per month, so a hell of a lot more expensive. I didn't like it. It just wasn't as user intuitive. The user interface was shit. Compared to Chronometer, Chronometer I thought was a lot more simple to understand. Plus it also uh, gives you a breakdown of micronutrients, which is your essential vitamins and minerals. That doesn't really apply to me. I mean, honestly, I really don't give a shit about micronutrients from my diet. If need be, if I need a particular micronutrient like a vitamin, like vitamin D, I'll just go ahead and supplement with it. I'm not that particular that I need to measure my vitamin levels in the foods that I, I eat. Though if I wanted to go that route, Chronometer cer certainly provides that for me if I want if I, if I to do that. Um, the free version of Chronometer, it'll give you a daily log of all the foods you've eaten. However, it does not allow you to break down your foods into specific meals, which is vital to my needs. So first things first, you know, you want an app to be able to set your daily uh, caloric goal. So right now I'm only eating eating 1,800 calories. That's a significant deficit of what I normally eat. I mean, if I was doing things right, I'd be eating about 2,000 calories a day now, but right now I'm just doing 1,800. So within that 1,800 calories, my macros are important, my macro split. Macros include your proteins, your uh, carbohydrates, as well as fats. Right now, my macro split is 33, 33, 33. Uh, that's what is best for me. So 33% of my diet comes from protein. This encompasses, well, this basically includes one gram per pound of body weight per day. Right now, I'm about 160 pounds, so that's how much 
uh, protein I need. Uh, as far as fats go, my fat level is pretty high. I mean, I've had low testosterone in the past, so I want to keep my fats pretty high uh, in order to keep my T levels, my natural T levels as high as possible. So I, I believe I'm eating like somewhere between 60 to 70 grams of fat per day. Now, everything else is a carbohydrate dump. And, um, you know, carbohydrates, you do need them. That's where you get your energy from. You know, I'm thinking about uh, switching to a, a macro split of 50-40-10, 50% protein, 40% fats, 10% carbs. That'd be your low-carb diet. And if I want to go ahead and do that, when it's time to go ahead and do that, I can do that through chronometer pretty easily. So what you do is when you're designing your daily meal plan, and here's a scoop. When you're designing your daily meal plan, it's basically like a diary. So you have to put it in each and every single day. If you want to go ahead and eat the same thing every day, like with, within a specific time frame. So with me, I change my diet. I update it every three months along with my exercise routine. You know my exercises. And I eat the same exact thing every day just to keep it simple. I mean, yeah, I do eat cheap meals here and there. But I really strive to eat 80, 90% of my diet. And if you're doing it right, you shouldn't be any, no more than 10% of your weekly diet should be cheats. Um, but anyways, in the free, in the free version, it'll give you just a log, just, just all the foods. Uh, when you're, when you're putting foods in your diet, when you're, when you're trying to figure out, um, what foods to put in your specific meals, they had this big ass global database full of all kinds of food information, basically from every store you go shop at. So right now I'm shopping at Aldi and Super Walmarts to get my stuff. That will, you know, that'll, that's where I get the cheapest food in my area. But anyways, I get a, a package of food. I take my phone. I scan the barcode. It'll go ahead and pull all the nutritional information from Chronometer's existing database. From there, it'll give the nutrition facts that I need, total calories eaten per serving, and all the macros too. That's really all that matters to me. Now, if you do want to go ahead and put in a food, like let's say produce, uh, into Chronometer that doesn't have a barcode, um, maybe it's just not in their database, you can go ahead and look that up online. So for example, off the top of my head, a Macintosh apple, your, your normal medium large size Macintosh apple has about 80 calories in it, and that's one serving. So I take that information, I put it in the database, and then it automatically transfers it over to my daily log. When I want to transfer from day to day to day, all you do is copy and paste day one, copy and paste that to day two, three, four. And you can also do stuff like this. Like let's say day one is uh, the first day of the month. You can go ahead and copy all that information and run it through like the rest of the month if you want to. However, the one problem with Chronometer that I don't like, and you know, I try to see if there was a setting for this online or if they're going to do anything about it, but it doesn't automatically repeat your daily diary from day to day to day. You've got to do that manually, which is sort of a pain in the ass, but overall, because you can access the app on your phone or on your desktop PC, um, it's fairly easy to copy from one day to the next. Obviously, you got to do it manually. Now, Chronometer also includes a calorie counter based on the well-known mifflin saint Joe equation. The, the, that equation is basically like the de facto standard whenever you're trying to count your calories online through, it, through a fitness calculator. It's dependent on your age, sex, height, weight, and body fat percentage. When you configure your total daily calories uh, you, need, you are wanting to eat, you also got to figure in how many hours of cardio you're doing per week. So right now I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm doing about three hours of cardio each and every week spread out over six days. So a half hour per every cardio session. And that gives me a roundabout figure about how many calories I want to eat total. And then that also takes into account how many calories I burn off through cardio exercise. There's also this weird setting. Now, I thought this was pretty sweet. I don't use it. And this is, again, this is like micro customization that doesn't really apply to me. But there's also a setting to include the thermic effect of food, which is automatically disabled by default. You can also enable if you want, but the thermic effect of food is the 
energy needed to digest your food. And you can add that calories burned to calories burned through cardio exercise. I don't really need that, and I don't think most people do, but it's there for you if you want to go ahead and give a look at that. Uh, two things. Here's the body fat calipers I recommend. It's like these, uh, the brand is SPRI. Very easy to measure body fat. It's not very accurate, but it comes with this chart right here. And you're pulling measurements, by the way, from the right side of your abs. I want to say about an uh, inch to the right of your belly button. And this is pretty easy. I mean, if you've never measured your body fat percentage before, just get one of these body fat calipers and just follow the instructions that come with them. They're super cheap. They're like 10 bucks. When planning your meals, you also have to have a food scale. So for people that don't weigh their food, I mean, I know this is kind of intimidating, but I'll just let you know straight up. It's actually a lot easier than it seems. All you do, like let's say for lunch, I eat top sirloin steak and also uh, canned sweet potatoes. I use a empty Tupperware container. I stick it on top of this food scale. I tear it out, meaning... I take out the, I, I uh, zero out the weight of the actual container. So right here, it's like 29 grams, and that gives it a 29 gram deficit. So the scale is now reading zero grams. I put my food in that Tupperware container. 150 grams of top sirloin steak, I stick it in there, and then I uh, throw it on the George Foreman. For carbs, I eat, you know, canned sweet potatoes. I put in 150 grams of uh, canned sweet potatoes, and I know how much to eat. Real simple. I'll eat the canned sweet potatoes right out of the Tupperware container so that way, you know, I'm not, I'm not messing around and uh, uh, taking more steps than necessary in food prep. But in terms of units, you know, you got grams. That's probably the easiest. You can do pounds, which I never use. You can do ounces, which I do use occasionally. And then you can do uh, milliliters, too, for measuring liquid. But anyways, this skill here costs 10 bucks. Very simple to use. I highly recommend it. I mean, look, if you wanted to be, if you don't want to use a scale, like you're just like, whatever, that's just too intimidating or it's too involved of a process. Um, I've uh, watched videos from from uh, Jeff Cavalier, Athlete X, where he like basically uh, divides a plate, like a pie chart. He'll, he'll put like maybe like a quarter of that plate dedicated to, uh, to protein, a quarter of it dedicate the fats and maybe half to like crunchy carbs or something like that but personally you know i think that's more of a pain in the ass than using a scale so i recommend the scale instead and that's it that's the end of this video